The blood of Jesus, God's Son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is our Gospel reading for this past Sunday, which was the third Sunday in Lent. We're looking at Mark chapter 8, verses 31 to 38, where Mark was inspired to write. Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise, from, rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. My dear friends in Christ, most young people really enjoy going to grandma and grandpa's house. At least I'm thinking back to when, when I was the grandchild. It was always a great thrill to be able to go to grandma and grandpa's house. I wonder if maybe that's changed today with, with video games and cell phones that some young grandchildren are able to play with. Maybe they don't like to see grandma and grandpa so much. But for me, it was always fun. And if you went to grandma and grandpa's house, if they asked you to do work or chores, it was always fun to do it for grandma and grandpa. Almost always fun. If, if for example, the parents would ask their children to do the exact same thing that grandma and grandpa asked them to do, maybe they would end up grumbling and complaining because it wasn't something special to them. Oh, most of us can probably think of doing something for our grandparents that we weren't happy to do about when our own parents asked us to do the same thing. Most grandchildren really look up to grandma and grandpa. They're willing to believe almost anything that they'd say, and they're willing to do almost anything that grandma and grandpa would ask them to do. At least that's the case, I would think, when grandchildren are younger. The situation, tragically, it usually does change as the grandchildren and as the grandparents get older. As grandchildren turn into teenagers, then who knows what happens. But, well, our reading for today it's encouraging us to act toward our God like young grandchildren might act toward their grandparents. Jesus is teaching us of the, the willingness of a true believer. He's talking about our willingness to listen to what Jesus has to say and then also to follow what Jesus has to say to do what he has to say. Just prior to our reading, Jesus had asked his disciples who they thought he was, and people were confused about Jesus. Some people looked at Jesus and thought that maybe he was John the Baptist or Elijah come back from the dead or, or one of the prophets. But the apostle Peter boldly confessed, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He was calling Jesus the promised one, the one that the Old Testament talked about, the one that God had told Adam and Eve would come one day to take care of the problem they had caused by the fall into sin. Well, after Peter made that confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus felt then that it was time for him to talk to the disciples about what would be happening soon. He wanted them to be prepared for his suffering and death. 
So in plain language, he told them what he would have to do in order to be the Savior. He told them that he'd be rejected by the Jewish religious leaders, the ones who should have welcomed him with open arms, that he'd be killed, that he'd be crucified, but that on the third day he would rise from the dead in victory. This was one time that Jesus spoke to those disciples, not in parables, but in plain, simple language, revealing to them that he was the only one that could really pay for their sins. Those disciples, they needed to willingly and eagerly listen to what Jesus had to say to them, just like we also need to willingly and eagerly and often listen to what Jesus has to say to us. But even the plain, simple talk that Jesus gave to them that day, it just went right over their heads. They didn't understand it. The disciples in their weak faith just didn't understand and grasp what Jesus plainly told them he was going to have to do, that he'd have to go to the cross and look like he was defeated in order to actually win the victory. But it wasn't Jesus' fault that they didn't understand, it was their weak faith. And that point is brought out so clearly today in our world when we consider all the different religions that exist and well, they all claim to believe what the Bible has to say. God's word is really very plain, plainly spoken. It's, it's in clear, simple language. Yet, even though the Bible is so clear about how Jesus is the only Savior, yet people are often inclined to, to think that Jesus didn't do enough for their salvation. People are inclined to look at it and think of Jesus as just being an example for us to follow as to, instead of as the Savior who paid for our sins. If he was just an example and we're supposed to do the best we can, well then, he didn't pay for our sins, then we have to do the work. It's tragic that so many people listen to the Bible, supposedly listen, and it goes over their head. The real message doesn't sink in. People still think they have to do their part. Or people listen to the Bible and think of it as a general guideline instead of the very word of God. Like the disciples, we need to willingly and eagerly listen and keep on listening to everything that Jesus has to say. And a lot of what the Bible says is it's going to go over our heads, even though it still is clear and simple and plain. But the Holy Spirit working through the Word of God, He can work on our hearts. Some of it will go over our heads, but that's why we need to keep on listening to the Word of God over and over and over again so that the Holy Spirit working through the Word of God can work on our hearts and on our minds so that we know that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, the only way to heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, give me always a willingness to listen to your word so the Holy Spirit can keep working on my heart so I trust in Jesus, not in myself, for heaven. I pray in Jesus, my Savior's name, amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always, amen.